ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma ma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam as we discussed allah's vast forgiveness and his vast mercy there are many paths allah has made for us to erase the sins to earn his forgiveness not just by asking but other than that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, And so sins decrease with iman, therefore if the servant, the abd, he repents, if he makes tawbah, Allah loves him. And so his rank will ascend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his tawbah. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ الْعَبْدْ لِيَعْمَلْ فِي مَا يَرَى النَّاسِ عَمَلَ أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنْ أَهْلَ النَّارِ وَيَعْمَلْ فيما يرى الناس عمل اهل النار وهو من اهل الجنه وانما الاعمال لخواتيمها this hadith which we have in sahih al bukhari prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said a man may do good deeds like the deeds of the people of jannah that it seems to the people as if he is righteous and good that he is doing good deeds with a good intention while in fact he is from the dwellers of the hell fire the people who will go to jahannam and similarly a person may do deeds that seem to the people like they are evil deeds like he's a person who will go to the hell fire while in fact he's from the dwellers of jannah and so to it it directs his attention so he seeks forgiveness meaning the one who has this evil or this wrong you're seeing he also has within him something that causes him to seek allah's forgiveness and he repents to allah for committing it verily the rewards of the deeds performed depend on his last actions how we die and as muslims we know that death can come to us at every moment and it will not spare any human being kullu nafsin dha'iqatu al-mawt every soul will taste death whether you like it or not whether it's time in your mind or not it will come when it comes ibn rajab al-hanbali rahimahullah he said what is meant by here fi ma yara an-nas indicates what is hidden what may what may what is apparent to the people and that a bad end is because of a hidden problem that the people are not aware of so yes he may do the actions of the people of jannah the way you see him the way you see her but they have something hidden within them and if they die upon that that's the way they will end as the people of the hell fire but then there's the one who does the evil they do the bad they do the wrong deeds and you see that of them that they're a person of jahannam that they're a person who does the actions of the people who will go to jahannam but what is hidden from you is some good and that good usually is that fervency to beg Allah for forgiveness and to repent and so he will prevail at the end of his life and he will be led to a good end in Allah ta'ala so if the believer commits a bad deed then its punishment can be 
averted through ten ways. If you make a sin, if you do a sin, if you do an evil, it can be averted, the punishment for it can be averted in ten ways. So we want to reflect upon these ten today. The first one that he repents, he makes tawbah. A tawbah al nusuha the sincere repentance, so that Allah accepts his tawbah, and then we know the reward. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَتَّاعُهُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهِ But the one who repents from a sin, it is as if he or she did not sin. This is from the mercy of Allah, the vastness of his forgiveness. That if you make tawbah, tawbah al nusuha عندك ندم, you have regret, remorse, sadness for what you did, you vow not to do it again. You ask Allah for forgiveness and you repent to Him, then inshallah, He will accept this repentance. In Surah Qaf, Allah says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ هَذَا مَا تُوَعْدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيدٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Qaf, what means it will be said, this is what you were promised, this jannah for the muttaqeen. And Allah is still saying, someone who has taqwa is one who sins. You can still be a sinner if you have that taqwa. This is what you were promised. It is for those after returning to Allah in sincere repentance and those who preserve the covenant with Allah by obeying Him and what He ordered and what His Messenger Muhammad ﷺ gave you and what He ordered and you worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a way to get forgiveness and repentance accepted, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you make that tawbah and nasuha, that sincere repentance. Second, you seek Allah's forgiveness. Asking of Allah so that you are forgiven. Allah says, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمْلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى Allah says what means, and verily, I am indeed forgiving to the one who makes tawbah. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's acknowledging you're not going to be perfect. That you are weak, that you have your sins. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, I am indeed forgiving to the one who repents. He makes tawbah, and He believes in tawheed. If you don't learn anything from last week or this week, except for one thing, let it be that tawheed is what is necessary for you to get this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The acceptance of your forgiveness and the acceptance of your tawbah, of your repentance. You must only worship Allah alone without partners. Even if your mom and your dad, your brothers and your sisters, your uncles and your aunts, your family members, and everybody else around you turns away because you get rid of some shit that may be part of your custom or whatever, do it. It's worth losing everything. You don't want to lose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so this tawheed is important. So the one who repents and believes and does righteous deeds and amal, you have to do the righteous deeds, then Allah, He will forgive you. And then you must remain constant upon it until your death. And istiqama. This istiqama is important that you don't just say it once, you must remain firm and steadfast upon that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ يَجِدَ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمًا Whoever does an evil, whoever wrongs himself, and afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah oft forgiving and most merciful. As long as it's sincere. As long as you want to repent to Allah, ask Him for forgiveness so He accepts it because you know that if He doesn't, and he chooses to punish you in the hellfire, then that is the worst of abodes you can end up in. There are so many opportunities, my dear brothers and sisters, that Allah gives us for this. To call upon him and ask for forgiveness. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, or he said, يَتَنَزَّلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى كُلَّ لَيْلَ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا حِينَ يَبَقَى ثُلَّةَ اللَّيْلِ الْآخِرِ يقول من يدعوني فأستجيب له من يسألني فأعطيه ومن يستغفرني فأغفر له رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when it is the last third of the night this is an hour and a half two hours before the beginning time of Fajr the blessed and the superior our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala he descends every night to the heaven of this dunya to the, the, the heaven of this world this descent the way Allah descends is like the istawa, the way Allah ascends, in the sense that we do not ask how. Al-Kayfiyya, how Allah does this, we will never comprehend. Imam Malik, he threw someone out of his lecture, out of his sitting, when he wanted to ask about this istawa. He called it an innovation that the person would ask, 
and had him picked out of where he was teaching. So we don't ask how, how. But you cannot say that Allah does not ascend al istawa above his arsh or descend to the lowest heaven. And you do not say how or think of it or think you can comprehend it. But you must affirm it because it's what came down in the Quran and the authentic sunnah. So Allah, he descends to the lowest heaven of this world and he says, is there anyone who is asking of me so I can give it to them? Is there anyone who, <clears throat> is there anyone who invokes me demands of me something so I may respond to him? Is there anyone who is seeking my forgiveness so I may forgive them? And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. This is if you wake up in the last third of the night and you make wudu and you pray at least two rakahs. You can call upon Allah. Allah is willing to answer the supplicant in this time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there's many other aspects. The wudu, the salah, saying ameen out loud with, after the imam does the dua of kar. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, if there was a river to his companions, if there was a river outside of your home and you washed it five times a day, would there be any dirt left upon you? They said, la, la shaykh. They said nothing would be left upon us. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ فَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تُذْهِبُ الذُّنُوبِ كَمَا يُذْهِبُ كَمَا يُذْهِبُ الْمَاءَ الدَّرْمَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, he said that Washing, making your wudu, it wipes away your sins. That making the ablution that you do to prepare for prayer, that this wipes away your sins and it takes them away from you. So this is a method for you to rid yourself of sins. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha amman al-qari' fa'amminu fa'inna al-malaika tu'amminu faman wafaqa ta'minahu تأمين الملائكة غفر غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه رواه البخاري. Again in Sahih al-Bukhari we have an authentic hadith where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says when the Imam says Amin out loud because this was the Sunnah of our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in Fajr, in Jum'a, in Maghrib, in Isha when he would read out loud in the rakat that you would read out loud he would say Amin out loud and then the companions would follow saying Amin out loud. The hadith says, when the imam says ameen, then you say ameen. So you don't say it before him. You do not supersede him. You don't say it before him. You wait until he says ameen. And once he begins that ameen stretch, you begin and you say it. <clears throat> then say ameen as the angels say ameen. Whoever says ameen when the angels do out loud, his previous sins will be forgiven. My brothers and sisters, there are so many things we can do daily. Adhkar, dua. This saying of Ameen out loud, making the wudu properly, even if you yani, want to make it for every salah, even if you have it, this all washes away the sins. Another thing to get you forgiveness and your repentance accepted, that you perform good deeds so that it wipes out the bad deeds. For indeed, the good deeds remove the bad deeds. We have a, <clears throat> a fair and acceptable narration of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said to me, this was to Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, have taqwa of Allah wherever you are. Fear Allah and keep your duty to Allah no matter where you may be at every time. Always be conscious of Allah and keep your duty to Allah. And follow every evil deed, every sin you do with a good deed, so that it would wipe it out. Because this is the reward for the, yeah, this is the, one of the ways to get uh, that evil deed off of you, is by you follow it up with good deeds. hasan And treat the people with good manners, good character, and good behavior. Again, this hadith is hasan in the sunnah of tirmidhi. So the sadaqah, from giving in charity to even the smile upon your face. This is sadaqah, this is charity. To the morsel of food, you take in your hand, in your right hand, and you put it in the mouth of your wife or your parents. This is sadaqah. Good behavior, good manners, this is sadaqah. Charity and a way to wipe out sins you do. Another way to get forgiveness for your sins that Allah has given us a path to do is that you make dua for your believing brothers and seek forgiveness for them, whether they're living or passed away. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ مُسْلِمٍ يَدْرُوا لِأَخِيهِ بِظَهْرِ الْغَيْبِ إِلَّا قَالَ الْمَلَكِ وَلَكَ بِمِثْلِ 
Every time, as this hadith says, there is no believing servant who supplicates for his brother. He makes dua to Allah for his brother or sister Muslim behind his or her back without them knowing, except that the angels say the same for you as well. The same for you. So make making dua for your brothers and sisters in Islam for stuff that you want even. Make it for them. And the angels will also say, and the same for you in response to your dua. And asking for forgiveness for the believing men and women. This will get you a hasana, as the hadith mentions, for every believing man and woman. Allah maghfir al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat. If you make this dua, every believing man, every believing woman, you get a hasana, a reward for each one. Because your concern should be your brothers and sisters in faith. Also to earn the forgiveness, make an endowment unto him from the rewards of their own actions, that they make an endowment unto someone for the rewards of their own actions of a nature that Allah allows him to benefit from. Meaning that you do something for somebody else to get the benefit of. Aisha radiallahu anha, Umm al mumineen the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. May Allah be pleased for her, with her. She said, a woman said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, my mother died suddenly. And if it had not happened, she would have given sadaqah and charity and donated something. So will it suffice that I give sadaqah on her behalf? <laughs> so she said, will, I, يعني, will it suffice if I give sadaqah on her behalf, charity on her behalf? So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, yes, give that sadaqah, give it on her behalf. Give that on her behalf. So this is a way to free yourself of some sin. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, If a person dies, all of his deeds come to an end except for three. Sadaqatin jariyah. An ongoing charity. A charity when he was alive, he paid forth. Right? Into something that continues to benefit the Muslims, benefit the people, benefit the animals who may come and eat or drink from it. If you help build a masjid, if you help build a school, if you do any of these things, any of those things, you will get the reward even when you're in your grave. A knowledge which benefits the people. Giving someone a gift of tafsir uh, al-kathir. Or giving them a gift of Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim or Balugh al-Maram or Riyadh al-Salihin, one of those books that are authenticated and that have proof for their authentication. This will benefit you when you leave this world. And what ibn Salihin yad'ula and a righteous child who makes dua for you. So teach your children how to make dua for you. Teach them because when you're dead and gone, that is one of the things that can still benefit you even though you've been buried under the earth you used to walk upon. So be mindful of this. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, just as a quick note. One time one of the companions he walked into the masjid. His name was Sulaik. He came into the masjid and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he told him, Did you pray to Rafas? تحية المسجد. Okay, and this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim, it's an authentic hadith. Up and down, right, left. So he told, Sulaik said, no, I did not. He said, to stand up. He told him, the Prophet told him to stand up. He said, إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمْ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ وَالْإِمَامِ يَخْطُبْ فَالْيَرْتَعْ رَكْعَتَيْنِ وَالْيَتَجَوَّسْ فِيهِنَا If we love the Prophet if you love the Prophet then you imply this. If you forget and you come and you sit down, and I'm telling you this now, and you remember it, stand up and pray the two rakas. Because that's the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, if you come on the day of Jum'ah, and the Imam is giving the khutbah, he's in the middle of the khutbah, then pray two rakas before you sit down, 
and make them يعني, swift, keep them light. You don't read Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay? Read Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Asr. This is from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So if you enter the masjid, pray two rakahs. It's not disrespecting whoever is giving the khutbah. This is the Sunnah of the best of mankind. The Sunnah of the one we claim to love. How can we truly love him if we abandon his Sunnah? This is not my madhab says, my madhab says, I was taught, was I don't care. If you're a Muslim who believes in the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, as the Sahaba lived it and implemented it and practiced it, then you pray to Rakh as when you enter the masjid. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah gives us so many ways to get forgiveness. We've mentioned a few of them. There's a few more we want to mention for us to benefit from. We reach the one where Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he will intercede for him. This being in the hereafter on the day of judgment, Yom al Qiyamah, that the Prophet وسلم, will intercede on his behalf. And Imran ibn Hussein, radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, يخرج قوم من النار بشفاعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فيدخلون الجنة يسمون الجهنميين. The Prophet ﷺ in this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said some people will be taken out of the fire. They were going to go to the fire. They went to the fire. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, shifa'a, his intercession, where he will go and make sajda in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be taught to glorify and praise Allah with words that Allah will command him with. And then Allah will tell him, raise your head and ask. Ask of me and I will grant you that shifa'a. And you will ask this person and this person and this person. Forgive them their sins, even their major sins. Why? Because they used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever they heard my name. Why? Because they used to implement and follow my sunnah, even if it brought them mockery and ridicule and people making fun of them. This shifa'a of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't lose hope for it. But we have to earn it by following his sunnah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by remembering him every time we hear his name with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Asking Allah to grant him peace and blessings. Ameen. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لكل نبي دعوة فأريد إن شاء الله أن أختبي شفاعة لأمتي يوم القيامة. رواه البخاري. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said every prophet was given a dua, an invocation they can make that Allah will fulfill. And I wish if Allah wills to keep my special dua to be my shafa'a for my intercession for my followers on the day of resurrection. May Allah make us of those who earn the shafa'a and get it, inshallah. Ameen. Another way to get that forgiveness, to earn Allah's acceptance of our, our repentance, is that Allah the Most High will test you in the life of this world by way of tribulations, calamities, and this will wipe away your sins. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ يُصِيبُ الْمُؤْمِنِ حَتَّى الشَّوْقَ تُصِيبَهُ إِلَّا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهَا حَسَنَةً أَوْ حُدَّتْ عَنْهُ بِهَا فَقِيئًا رواه مسلم Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, there is nothing in the form of trouble that a, this, that a believer has. Even if it's the prick of a thorn, you're picking a lemon, that's from Allah. And it's going to make your food taste better, or you make lemonade, or whatever, it's going to benefit you. And in doing so, you get a prick of a thorn from that tree, or you're clipping some roses and it pokes, or whatever it may be. Everything you go through, from even the smallest thing, to then everything which is grander, dealing with the loss of a loved one, an accident, uh, some hardship, money being lost, whatever it may be. Every calamity that a believer goes through, except that Allah, that Allah has defeated him, except that Allah will obliterate some sins from you, will erase some sins for you because of you going through. So when those tests and those trials come to us, be patient. Remind, remind yourself of this hadith. Remind yourself of this. Mus'ab ibn Sa'ad, he said that his father, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, he said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, which people are the most severely tested? He said, وسلم, the prophets, then the next best, then the next best. A person is tested according to how much religious commitment he or she has. If he is steadfast in the religious commitment, he will be tested more severely. 
But if he's frail in his religious commitment, he won't be tested as much. ثُمَّ قَالْ فَمَا يَبْرَحُ الْبَلَاءُ بِالْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَتْرُكُهُ حَتَّى يَتْرُكُهُ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَطِيئَةِ Look at this. That Allah will continue to try you, to test you with calamity and hardship after calamity and hardship until they're left walking on the earth with no sin on them. With no sin. We sin daily. And we don't praise Allah the way He deserves for His na'am, for His favors and His blessings. Yet, Allah, when He tests us and tries us to prove our faith, every one of these things, He erases sin so much so that someone can get to the level of needing Allah as if they didn't sin because of their trials and their tests. So never think you know better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing that can forgive you, get your forgiveness of your sins and erase your sins from you, the trial in the barzakh, the period in the grave, by way of the jolt, this is the way sins are expired. On the day, the number nine, or the open plain on the day of judgment, Yom Al-Qiyamah, where it is, 50,000 years long, the sun overhead, everyone in a state of fear, running from everyone they love. Because they know this is the day Allah will bring them to account. And there's no hiding what they did or said, etc. The punishment of those days, of that day, Afwan, that one day can also get you the forgiveness of, of Allah and the acceptance of His repentance. And the last one we will mention, the last one that can get you the forgiveness of Allah is just that Allah chooses to forgive you. He chooses to be merciful to you. Even if you didn't make hell before it, as long as it's not shit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْرُ مَا يُشْرَكُ بِهِ وَيَخْرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Allah says what means, indeed, Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk, the sin of those who associate partners with Allah, pray to other than Allah, make dua to other than Allah. Yes, even if it's a prophet or a righteous person or whatever, it's all shirk. You only make dua to Allah. You sacrifice for Allah. You pray for Allah to see you and reward you. You ask Allah for forgiveness and for His mercy. You seek help and aid from Allah. Even if it's through Allah sending someone else to aid you in a worldly matter. The one who does this, he has to be firm and tawheed. Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk, but He'll forgive any other sin other than that. Even if He didn't make tell before it. And he who associates others with Allah has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. What an amazing Lord we have. His vastness with respect to mercy and forgiveness, even we don't deserve it. And Allah may still grant it to us. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as we mentioned last week, but again, the benefit, in the Sahib al-Shimal, لِيَرْفَعُ الْقَلَمْ سِتَّ سَاعَاتٍ عَنِ الْعَبْدِ الْمُسْلِمِ الْمُخْتِحِ فَإِنْ نَدِمَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ مِنْهَا أَلْقَاهَا وَإِلَّا كُتِبَتْ وَاحِدَةً This hadith, which is authentic by Shaykh Laban, he graded it as Hassan. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the angel of the left, he's commanded to hold up his pen, the angel over all of our left shoulder, who writes down our sins and bad deeds. He's commanded to lift it up. He refrains from writing down the evil and the sin you did. For six hours after the Muslim commits a sin, if the person regrets it, you have to have the regret. It's not just lip service, astaghfirullah. Wa atubu ilayhi. It's not enough. That there's nadam, there's the regret. If you regret it and you ask Allah for forgiveness, He casts it aside, the angel casts it aside. Yani, he does not write it down, otherwise He writes it down as one sin. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مَنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَأْخْرَ الْذَنُوبِ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says what means, say, O ibadi, O my slaves, who have transgressed against themselves, wronged themselves by the sins they've committed and the evil they've done. Despair not of the mercy of Allah. Despair not at the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. Ikhwani wa khati fillah. As though, although we always want to balance al khawf, the fear of going to Jahannam and being punished, we must always balance with it on the other side, al raja the rahmatillah, the hope for Allah's mercy. These two must be balanced. 
We have a Lord who forgives when we do good deeds and it erases sins. We have a Lord who forgives when we ask of Him and beg of Him to forgive us and to accept our repentance. We have a Lord who forgives by punishments that we may incur in this life, in the grave, on Yom Al-Qiyamah. We have a Lord who forgives and is merciful even when you don't ask Him. He's capable of forgiving for forgiving you as long as you don't commit shirk. And so on and so on. Turn to Allah, the Tawbah and Nasuha. Always turn to Allah. Come back to Allah. Do not despair. He can forgive everything we all do. And it will not decrease His dominion, His kingship, His lordship in one way. He is capable. And none of us are. Allahumma khabir al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimin wa al-Mu'minin 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 wa al-Mu'minin